Hello! If you're watching this video, you're probably the proud new owner of a Silhouette or Silhouette SD or you're interested in purchasing one of the machines and you're curious about the Silhouette Studio software that comes with the machine that's used to basically make it work to produce the die cuts. Um, this is just going to be a quick video or as quick as it, a quick, as quick of a video as it can be to explain all of these buttons that you see in Silhouette Studio because if you've never used any type of design program before this screen can seem overwhelming or this program actually can seem overwhelming after you start to play with it because it doesn't look like there's a lot of buttons but every button you click produces a new menu of buttons or a new menu of options so so I'm gonna jump right into this so it doesn't turn into a 20 minute video this left hand side of the screen over here is really straightforward. This is where you cr get a new document, where you open a new document that you've already worked on, where you save what you're working on, and where you can save to an SD card. And if you want to know about the SD stuff, you can look it up online or you can s send me a message or make a comment and I'll explain it. Um, next you have print and send to silhouette. Now you may be wondering why would I print a digital die cutting file? Well you actually can print out things and then cut them out. It's a similar feature or similar to the Cricut Imagine. So you can utilize this print icon right here. Our next set of icons is uh, your copy and paste. Copy, paste, and cut are these three. And these are your undo and redo buttons. And these are all zoom options that you see here. They allow you to zoom in or zoom out. Um, they also allow you to zoom over a shape, a selected area, so you can select an area to zoom in on using these. And this button here, this one right here, allows you to go back to fit it to the window. So say I had zoomed in on something, this would just recenter it back to where it was. Now this is the simple side of the program. Over on this side on the right is where it gets more complicated. Now this first icon that looks like a house is the Silhouette Studio Home button and you'll notice that all of these icons running down the right side of the screen look exactly like the icons at the top part of the screen. And this is a great place to start if you're new to Silhouette Studio because instead of you having to guess or click to figure out what each one of these icons are, it's going to show you right here. So this first group is for you to fill a shape. Somehow you can fill it with a color, a gradient, or a pattern. So for example, if I wanted this circle to be uh, full of these funky arrows, I would just click the circle, and then I would click the arrows, and that's it. Our next set is line options. Now there are a variety of reasons why you can change your line options. One would be so you can tell the machine specifically what to cut out. So you can tell it to only cut the green line or only to cut the red line on elaborate shapes. Or you can tell the machine, like in this one that says cut style, the second, this third icon in the second box, this group over here, you can tell it in the cut style menu that you want a perforated edge, or you want it to cut each individual item on the sheet, or you want it to cut around the perimeter of individual objects. These are some more advanced features of um, the Silhouette Studio program and if you'd like to know more about it please send me a message or email or a message through YouTube or leave a comment down at the bottom and just just ask because I'm more than happy to explain this if people want to know but these are more advanced features. This next one here is your text text style box and this allows you to change the font that you're using. You can use any true type font that's on your computer and you can cut it with your silhouette. So this is your where you choose what kind of font you want and this is also where you can change your character spacing and your line spacing. This next group has your move, rotate, actually you know what I'm gonna cheat myself. This one, this box right here has your move, rotate, scale, align, and replicate windows. Now these are, this set here and the following box right after it are the ones that get used the most frequently. This first one is move and I'm not 100% sure why they even gave it an icon because you can move these, uh, these shapes around just by clicking on them. You can also move them a little bit just by using your arrow keys. So I'm not 
I never use this, to be honest. The next one is rotate, and you can rotate uh, by preset degrees, or you can type in a custom rotation here. This one is your scale window. It has presets, or you can put in a certain percentage, but most common and what most people are looking for is how to change the size of a shape. So say you have this square or this, why don't we make it more of a rectangle? You have this rectangle and you know for a fact that you need it to be five inches wide. It doesn't matter how high it is, but it needs to be five inches wide. All you have to do is enter five, click lock aspect ratio, and then hit apply. And then you'll have it perfectly shaped for your project. So let me get back up here to scale. So this that's where you can change the dimensions of a shape in scale. The next one is the align window. This comes in handy if you are working on a project and you need your shapes to line up perfectly. So you can utilize a certain part of the pattern paper or because you want uh, two edges of something to line up for some reason. So all you have to do in this window to get it to work is to highlight both objects on your screen and then click the appropriate button or the, um, on the menu here. You can align left, center, right. So I'm just going to click the align uh, top and it'll align both objects here at the top. One button here that I think that gets overlooked that I tend to use a lot is the centralize button here. And if you highlight both and you click centralize, it'll put the objects perfectly on top of each other. And this comes in really handy when you're looking for precision. So that's the align window. The next one is the replicate window. And this either you love or you hate. You can replicate any shape that you have on your drawing area or your drawing board. And you have the option to duplicate right, left, you can mirror objects. So if you if you have a shape but you want it to be the other way, instead of putting your paper upside down on your cutting mat, you can mirror, mirror it here on the replicate menu. You can also fill your page by using rows and columns of three or four. And you can also rotate and make copies at the same time. So like for example, I'll open up a flower if I can find a flower so I'll open up this flower here and I'll scale it down and if I click the replicate replicate menu and go to rotate five copies it looks like some type of etch a sketch design after it's done because it's made five copies on top of itself and it's rotated in increments you can do precision Replicate options by clicking down on this advanced options menu, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So that's on this bar right here. The next menu has your modify options. And within modify, this is where you can come in and choose to weld or subtract or crop items. So let's say I wanted a uh, a cutout on this rectangle of this flower. All I would have to do is click, is highlight both item, both objects, and then click subtract, and it would take that portion away. There'd be a cutout there. Oh, so this is where your weld options are. If you have two shapes and you want them to be stuck together, for example, if I had this circle here if I had two of them and I wanted them attached to each other and I don't want this red line to cut through because it will cut perfectly through all you have to do is highlight both of them and then whoops didn't get both okay hit both of them and then click weld and then you see it'll take away that portion in the middle and it'll it, the, the pieces are stuck together now you have to remember when you see a red line it's gonna cut on that red line when you're doing basic designing. So you have weld, subtract, crop, subtract all, all that is in the modify screen. Next we have the offset option. Now say you've designed this shape and it fits your project perfectly but you would like for an, in a perfect inset of this you want to layer two pieces of cardstock on top of each other. This is where you would go, it, so you get precision again. 
and you don't have to sit and try to do it with a pair of scissors. And how you use this is you highlight the shape and then depending on how you want the offset, you either click offset and this will draw you the same shape on the inside or you do internal, or excuse me, if you click this one, it's going to be on the outside like so. And if you click this one, it's going to be on the inside. Oh, I got to highlight it first. And then it's on the inside. And you can use a slider to adjust the, the size here. Kind of looks like a peanut. This next menu is Trace. And if you find some type of graphic online that is, isn't too intricate and you want to trace around it, this is where you would go. Same, same idea. You would find the image and drop it in and then go around it. Usually you want it to be a JPEG or an, I've heard people can do it with PNG files, but I'm not sure how. And then you would click trace. Now this last one is one that sometimes people have a hard time finding or realizing that what they want to do is in this menu. And this is the page option here. And this will allow you to change the size of your paper on your mat. The paper can accommodate an eight and a half by 12 piece of paper. By default, it opens up at eight and a half by 11. So for example, if you're working on it, if you've taken a piece of 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook paper and you cut it down, this is the only place you have to go to change it and you would change it to 12 by eight and a half. And now you can see it fills the entire carrier sheet. Also here is the option for rotating your mat different directions and revealing your carrier sheet. So if you like to work with the grid lines in the background of the actual carrier sheet to use as a reference, this is where the slider is located on the page option here. Next we have the silhouette cut settings. Um, unlike other digital die cutters, there is no option of changing uh, pressure or blade depth or anything like that on the actual machine. You have to do it through the software. And this is where you go and do it. And you'll see it has different options, pattern paper, cardstock heavy or light. This is also where you're going to go if you want to cut twice, if you want to do a double cut. And this is your blade depth. And when you have all your settings set where you want them, you just click this send to silhouette option. The next one here is registration marks. The silhouette has a cut and print feature, or excuse me, a print and cut feature. I always say it backwards for some reason. It has a print and cut feature where you can print out something you've purchased or that you've created on your own. Use registration marks. If I click there, it'll show these little lines. And this basically tells the machine, gives the machine a reference or a guide of where to cut. And it'll cut perfectly around your objects. And these little X's or this hatch marks through here. You don't want to place any objects on here because they won't cut appropriately. So just a FYI. And the last one is a grid. If you like a grid that is, let me undo the registration marks. <coughs> Excuse me. If you like a grid that's tighter than what's shown on the um, carrier sheet, this is where you're going to go. You're going to go to the show grid option here on the side and it'll show you a grid in um, whatever variety you choose. And here's the spacing and divisions here. So this is where you can make a customized grid. Now on the left.